you may be one of the very few people who own a rust free SL but most people will at some stage have to deal with rust issues and one of the common rust areas on these cars is these frame rails here and I'm going to do a short video today on the ways of repairing these you've basically got two choices you can either use butt welds or lap welds and I'm going to show you the problem of doing it the quick and easy way this Sue Ray DSL over here has been repaired many times over the years. It's the first car I ever owned. Um, and the repairs, I have to say, have not been done particularly well. And we need today, today we need to set about undoing one of those welding repairs to the frame rails and doing it. I don't know if I'm doing it properly. I'm no expert in these matters, but I do think that I can't possibly do things worse than they've been done previously. Once we finish that car, we can then move on to our next project, which is putting this car here back together. Before I can put this section in here, I'm going to get rid of this patch that someone's put on here. Um, I suspect that behind it, the patch will be rusted and all around here, I can see that the metal's not looking good. So I'm gonna cut a section out and I'm going to put in a proper patch and butt weld it in. We've done the majority of these cuts with the big angle grinder, but and we're just going to do the last little bit of cuts with the little Dremel tool. And these cut-off wheels don't last very long in the Dremel tool because they're so small, but to get those accurate corners, it's, um, it's easier to use the Dremel, otherwise you have to cut much further than you need to. So the moment of truth, what is this patch panel going to look like behind there? Not as bad as I thought, actually. One of the reasons that may have rusted on the back like that is simply because there should be a blanking grommet in that hole there. And you could obviously, when you're driving, just get salt spray spraying on the back of that. I'm just going to spend a moment just telling you what the difference between lap welding and butt welding is. Lap welding is when you've got a hole like that and you stick a patch over the top of it. The advantage of that is you don't have to cut the patch to size, it's quick and easy to do and you can be pretty confident when you've welded round because you can actually see the welds. But welding is when you have a hole like that and then you cut out all the rust and you lay a patch in there and then grind it flat. And butt welding has a number of advantages and potentially a number of disadvantages. If you try and butt weld two panels together like this with a very tight gap and you're not able to see the, the back side of this weld. When you weld the top of these, you might have a perfect line of weld, but when you turn it over, if you could do that, you might find that the actual um, penetration on the other side isn't quite as good as it looks on the front. And by the time you grind all of this flat, you may have ultra thin welds holding that together. And the way around that is to leave a gap. Now this is um, exaggerated here. This is an old test piece that I used when I was first welding. But if you have a gap between the bits that you're butt welding together, not a gap this big, and then you weld, you can be sure that when there's no holes showing that you've got penetration and weld going all the way through. So when you're butt welding, you're supposed to have a tiny gap between the two of them that you're basically filling and then you won't have the problem of the penetration on the other side. Now, in this particular case here, you can see that this is actually a structural piece of steel. It's a thick piece of steel. And what the person who's repaired this has done is whacked a huge, great big patch over these two holes here and hoping for the best. The problem is with that, you can see quite easily that moisture and salt water, etc., can just get into that gap there which is exactly what's happened, and over time that will just rust through the patch panel. Just before we weld a new patch in there, I'm just going to go over that with um, this finger file or power file. These are excellent for getting in really tight spaces, and we just want to remove all of that swath or whatever that's called. What I'm going to do is clamp the piece that we've cut out over this piece here, so that we get a pretty much exact fit, and I'm just making the piece we're going to put in there slightly bigger than this because obviously the width of the 
and the cut will have made that slightly smaller. It's pretty much perfect fit in there and we're just going to tack it in and then we might just have to tap this with a hammer. It's got a very small profile on it this thing here. Obviously the metal here is thin and we've got to be very careful when we come to grind the wells down. Really it's actually only the top wells that need to be flat here because this is where the panel lip will be sitting. We've got to make sure that that really is watertight and has got good penetration. We're just going to put some weld through etch primer on the back of that panel so it's protected and we can actually we've got access to that strut so we can also get in there with some internal frame seal as well but first we're going to just prime the back of that when you're doing patch panels like this you should avoid sharp corners ideally the, you should have rounded corners makes the world much stronger imagine one of the reasons that people don't prime the back of panels is because it takes a lot longer is you've got to wait for the paint to dry before you can repair it. Especially if you're going to give two coats. Before we've got access to the back of this, we can get in there with this finger foil and just sand off the rust there and just prime the back of that. So we've made up our patch panel, we've painted the back of it, and we're just using these magnets to get this completely flush. This is the most important part to be flush here because our panel is going to sit across here and this needs to be completely flat. So these magnets might make the welding a little bit funky, but um, we'll give it a red hot go. Pretty much finished butt welding that panel in there and we're just going to knock these welds down put a light behind check for any gaps this bit here where this metal on this side is a bit thin i think i'm going to get in from the other side inside the car and just put some copper behind there because i don't want to I'd like to build that bit up and i don't want to blow through it with the welder one thing i found is that using this finger file here is much much easier to grind these welds down you can do it really precisely without the masses of sparks flying everywhere and you can almost grind the welds down one by one so this is rapidly becoming my new favorite toy so i'm going to weld this part up now this is going to be tricky because some of the steel here is quite thin but i didn't want to cut any further closer to here for structural reasons but what i've done is i've wedged a piece of copper behind there so I'm hoping that I'll be able to tack up to there and then do this top bit without burning through this side. We're almost ready to glue, glue this panel in here. We'll be butt welding down here. So we're looking for a nice even gap all the way down. I've just got a tiny little bit to sand off here. We'll be using this great little finger file here. And um, this is all flat along here now and we will be using the panel bond along here so where there are small gaps the panel bond will fill those gaps in for us um, and that should be us about ready to go we're ready to put our primer coat on we're going to be doing the battery brackets that we've made up as well so we need a primer coat on there we need a primer coat on the piece we've made up and a primer coat on the car that i didn't think of and um, which is a good idea though is to actually take the wrapping off the glue so you can see exactly how much you've still got left as you can see we've only used half of this tube here um, which means that you should be able to glue on that inner wheel arch support panel as well the last time we used this was two days ago so i'll be interested to see if we can get this green plug out here and whether the glue is actually all solid it's actually looking good the thing i'm going to do is just make sure that this is actually coming out of both of those which Next it is up, we're just going to put on our new nozzle these are one-time use nozzles and we'll screw that down tight again we're just going to lay a bead to make sure that that is mixing as it should that looks fine
got our primer coat on. Now we're gonna put a thick bead on the actual car and we're gonna attach that to the car. Now remember, you can slide the panels together, but what you can't do is push them and then separate them together. And once we've got it in place, we're gonna use all of our neodymium magnets to stick it down. Here it goes, nothing as they say. I've got to try and get this in and out, separating the panels without getting glue all over the rest of the car. Okay. I'm just going to put these battery brackets in. Now I'm gluing these in and not welding them in because um, they're very prone to rusting. So I'm not going to run that risk. I'm going to leave this video here. We've managed to get this panel in. We've got nice gaps all along here. We'll come back and butt weld that. We're going to get beautiful waterproof um seal along here and along where this panel touches here so we'll come back and test that with water we've got the battery brackets in check that they still um match up with the battery tray which they do we just got to seam seal everything tomorrow and think about getting this panel here in